Uh, okay, good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us this session um, for the session on chemical engineering. Um, we have a jam packed informative session lined up for you today. So without further ado, let's kick off this evening session um, with a welcome from Prof. Glenn Bright, who is the Dean and Head of School of Engineering. Prof. Bright, I hand it over to you. Yeah, thank you very much, Swastika, and a very warm welcome uh, to ladies and gentlemen, uh, boys and girls. I also see we have in our, uh, in our room the representative from chemical engineering, so a warm welcome to them too. And I also thank you to Swastika yourself and to Sally, our PR representatives, for all the work you've done uh, in these open days. Before we start, I'd just like to remind uh, people to try and keep their mute button on. Uh, questions can be asked at any time. You would just go to the chat uh, option, uh, just go to the chat button, and you may ask a question at any time, and we will answer the question immediately. Uh, one of my representatives, or um, one of the PR uh, people, or one of the uh, staff members from chemical engineering. So tonight we have chemical engineering. Uh, just to put you in the picture, the University of KwaZulu-Natal School of Engineering has seven disciplines in engineering uh, and another discipline in land surveying. And these disciplines are divided into clusters. We call them clusters uh, because some clusters have more disciplines than others. Chemical engineering uh, is a fortunate cluster that uh, exists on its own. So the chemical engineering cluster is the discipline. So there's only one engineering discipline within the civil engineering cluster. Yesterday, we had the civil engineering, agricultural engineering and land surveying uh, presentation. And today we will be having the chemical engineering presentation. I myself as a Dean and Head of School, Professor Glenn Bright, <clears throat> as already mentioned, and the academic leader and some representatives from the from the cluster. All right, so first of all, where I'd like to start is, is with this. If you want to be an engineer, why do you want to be an engineer? And what would drive something or what would excite somebody to become an engineer? Now I can tell you now that whether you believe it or not, engineers make the world go around. If you're driving in a car, the car has been built by mechanical engineers, electronic engineers, chemical engineers are providing the propulsion. If you see an airplane fly by, that's been built by engineers. If you see a train going along, if you see a factory, if you see roads and bridges, it's built by engineers. There's absolutely no doubt that engineers are the cornerstone of the infrastructure uh, of a country. And that's why engineers are, are so important. So essentially what engineers do, they solve problems. So years ago, man wanted to go from one location to another. And in order to solve that problem, he built the motor vehicle, he built trains, he built airplanes, he built ships to move on one place to another. Man, of course, then wanted to go to the moon. Well, to go to the moon, you need a rocket. So man built a rocket. And when there are problems, problems regarding water problems, petrol problems, oil problems, mechanical problems, et cetera. Engineers solve problems. That's what they do. So that's why it's such a rewarding career because in the end, by solving a problem, you're contributing to the well-being of mankind. Of course, engineers have solved other problems like building guns and building atomic weapons, et cetera, which is debatable whether that solves uh, any problems. But of course, there was a need, defense, uh, or attack, and the engineers had to come up with a solution. So essentially, if you like solving problems, you like inquiring about things, you like asking how things work, and you want to be involved in that, then engineering is for you. The next thing to consider is where you want to do your degree. Now, I encourage you to do your degree where there is accreditation, which means that you're doing a degree not at an accredited institution, but do your degree at a place where the degree is accredited. What does that mean? Well, if a degree is accredited, it means there must be a professional body that's performing the accreditation. And people get confused uh, with accreditation. They believe if they go to a certain university or institution, therefore the degree is accredited. Not so. The degree is accredited by a professional organization. 
as in medical, as in accounting, as in law. The professional organization that accredits the degree for engineering is called the Engineering Council of South Africa. We call it ECSA, e -C -S -A, which is the acronym for the Engineering Council of South Africa. Now the Engineering Council of South Africa performs the audit, performs the quality assurance, and they uh, allow for uh, degrees to be accredited. All seven disciplines or degrees at UKZN in the School of Engineering are accredited through the Engineering Council of South Africa. All of them are accredited. And the Engineering Council of South Africa is a signatory to the Washington Accord in the United States. And this is the highest accreditation body that one can use uh, or one can subscribe to for an engineering degree. So the degrees at UKZN are accredited through the Engineering Council of South Africa, signatories to the Washington Accord to the United States, and they are all accredited. So that's something you need to consider uh, when you want to do a degree. Now, by being accredited means that this degree is now recognized worldwide, which means you can go to another university after you finish or work anywhere in the world, and you are safe to say and produce a degree certificate that is accredited, which means it's recognized internationally worldwide. So that's very important to consider that. The next thing is, you know, we live quite a long time, you know, and you want a rewarding career, you want a, a career, an exciting career. There's absolutely no doubt that engineering is that, because not only can you work in maintenance, you can work in research and development, you can work on the cutting edge of, of, um, of technology. In fact, one of our engineers at the moment, he is the one of the chief designers for McLaren. Uh, in the, the US uh, and in the UK. And we have engineers spread all around the world, working uh, in different rocketry, working in vehicles, working in different petroleums. So many of our engineers are sort of uh, around the world, including in CERN. And CERN is in, of course, in Switzerland, where we have the particle accelerator, which is an underground apparatus, to so looking at the origins of life. So that's a, a reason for doing engineering as well. The other thing you need to think about is the curriculum. You know, are you going to do an engineering degree where the curriculum is up to date? Now I can tell you that we have been spending the last year or so, and we're gonna to continue to do it, is reworking and uh, looking at our curriculum to bring it up to the 4IR, Fourth Industrial Revolution standard, such that students who are gonna be doing a degree through UKZN and the School of Engineering are doing the most up-to-date curriculum. So not only have we transformed our curriculum, we're in the process of finishing that, it's already been done in chemical, in fact, and we are now doing it in the other disciplines. But this is also in line with what the Engineering Council of South Africa wants. They want us to keep our curriculum up to date. We want to keep it up to date, and we want to make sure that the graduates from UKZ in School of Engineering are given the best possible education to allow them, of course, to do postgraduate study if they want to, or of course, to go work in a working place. Now, we also, we have a very good website in the School of Engineering. Uh, if you just go on to UKZN and you select the college and go into the school, you will see our website and all the disciplines are there. What's exciting about that is you can see some of our flagship projects. We have projects in pollution research, waste management, we have projects in aerospace, propulsion, robotics, mechatronics. We have it in civil engineering, pavements, electro electrical, electronic engineering, agriculture engineering, there are many very exciting flagship projects, which one gets involved in in the latter years of one's degree. So of course, maths and science are crucial. And the speakers will talk about that later on in the evening. But you need to be strong in maths and science and you need to have an interest in maths and science. It's difficult to, to do a, a degree where you don't have an interest in maths and science. So with that, have a look at the website, see where uh, all the operations are going on and what uh, we can offer. And then of course, make your decision. I think from my side, I'll leave it at that. Thank you very much. And I'm gonna pass on to the academic leader, Professor David Lockhart. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for uh, joining us for this uh, virtual open day session this evening. Uh, thank you to the Dean for that 
wonderful introduction to the school as well. Um, in this presentation, I'm going to be drilling down specifically on the discipline of uh, chemical engineering. And um, I'm going to be focusing on, on, on three questions uh, that are probably at the top of your minds. So uh, the first one is, uh, what is chemical engineering? And uh, uh, there, there usually is a little bit of misconception amongst the general public as to what chemical engineers actually do. Second question, uh, why choose chemical engineering? Is it really an attractive uh, career choice uh, in this modern age? Um, and, and, and the final and the most important one, uh, why choose UKZM? And hopefully by the end of this presentation, and in fact, at the end of this uh, virtual session, uh, you'll have a, a, a greater appreciation of, of all of these. Okay, so let's get straight into it. Uh, what is chemical engineering? Well, chemical engineering is all about changing raw materials into useful products that you use every day, uh, but, but in a safe and, and, and cost-effective way. Uh, the chemical engineers will then create and, and develop these processes to produce, uh, change, or, or, or transport properties and, and, and materials, but typically at a, at a much larger scale. But these are very technical definitions. So let's, let's try to uh, unpack them uh, using a very uh, sort of like simple and, and, and practical example. Now, in order to do that, we must travel back 5,000 years to the land of the ancient Egyptians. Uh, during that time, it was very common for, for the dead to be uh, preserved um, uh, by a, a process called mummification. Uh, this was for the afterlife. Um, and in order to help them do that, they used certain chemicals. Now, the ancient Egyptians were quite innovative. Uh, they uh, discovered that if you burn wood uh, under very specific conditions, you could extract a, a volatile, uh, clear liquid from there. Uh, and this liquid could actually be used to enhance the preservation uh, during mummification. Uh, that liquid, uh, which was originally called wood alcohol, uh, was actually methanol. Now, at that stage, obviously, there was uh, only a small amount that was required. But as the applications for methanol grew, uh, so did the need to, to produce this chemical at a much larger scale. So let's fast forward a few thousand years. Um, the first and, and, and second industrial revolutions. Uh, those introduced two specific things, uh, steam power uh, and the concept of mass production. And, and these really helped in terms of large scale production of chemicals, uh, including methanol. It was around about the same time that German companies began to produce methanol uh, using uh, a synthetic process, uh, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide and hydrogen. Um, and these companies began to realize that they needed individuals that, that not only had an underlying understanding of the, of the chemistry, uh, but also uh, could, could understand the context in which these processes were working, the engineering context. So, so how could you undertake this reaction at a large scale, for instance? Uh, how could you do that by, by whilst minimizing the amount of energy that you're using, uh, uh, reducing the amount of cost that's involved in the process, but also by, by, by also reducing the amount of waste that you produce it? Uh, and these are the questions, and, and from these questions was born uh, the discipline of chemical engineering. Now, of course, chemical engineers have made major contributions since then uh, to the production of methanol, and, and, and in the modern age, over, over 20 million tons of, of chemical is produced every year. Now, now with the rapid uh, expansion of this, this production capacity has come you know, many downstream applications for the chemical. Uh, methanol is now used in the production of synthetic fibers, high-performance plastics, uh, even in the construction industry. And in this way, chemical engineers have contributed to the, the, to the betterment of society. Now, in any chemical process, we just went through one of those, but, but it could be chemical production, it could be uh, petroleum refining, it could be water treatment, it could be the, even the, the production of uh, fast-moving consumer goods, uh, chemical detergents, uh, biscuits, <laughs> even soups, there's a chemical process at the heart of that. Right? Uh, and this chemical process is made up of many different unit operations. Uh, and these unit operations are all linked together and, and they function as a whole. So, so in, in, in some ways, it's like the human body. Uh, the, 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 each part of the chemical process needs to work with and it needs to interact and it needs to talk to uh, the other parts in order to make the entire process function. So. You know, you can't have a human body functioning out without the lung, or without the heart, or, or others. And chemical engineers will, will have this kind of like intimate knowledge 
um, of how each one of these individual parts works. Um, and these are the unit operations that I spoke about earlier. But, but beyond that, they'll also understand how they, 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 they work together, how they interact with each other. Uh, and, uh, and, and really, it's, it's this, this systems thinking, uh, which is a, is a key skill uh, that, that chemical engineers possess. In other words, understanding how uh, systems, the entire systems, uh, work and, and function. Now, in this last slide, I, I just want to clear up a couple of things that I, I, I usually questions I usually get um, on on chemical engineering in particular. So, chemical engineers are not chemists. So, although we do cover a, a fair amount of chemistry, so we, to, so that we can understand at a fundamental level how uh, raw materials are, are transformed into useful products, um, we we really focus on on the large scale uh, application of that. We seldom work on engines uh, unless, as, as uh, Prof. Wright has said, uh, it's in the fuel production or maybe on the, on the emissions reduction side. Uh, and we don't all work with explosives. So I can't tell you the number of times I've been asked if I make bombs for a living. But now that we've gone through that, that first question, let's, let's go out, move over to the, the second one. And, and this is also an important one. So why choose chemical engineering? Uh, well, in this series of slides, I, I've tried to, to gather uh, some, some of the reasons that I, I feel uh, kind of demonstrate to you that, that it's a really a, a, a favorable uh, profession and attractive profession to work in. And the first thing is it's, it, it's a global profession. So with a properly accredited degree, as Prof. Uh, mentioned earlier, uh, you will you know, have the ability to uh, work in different industries, uh, in different roles in those industries, uh, but also it, it, all around the world. Uh, and with that obviously comes uh, many global opportunities, right? To travel and, and, and to work with multinational companies. And, and, and this really improves, you know, uh, the, 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 the enriches your experience in terms of your career. The job choice is really enormous, right? Um, and this comes from two things. Uh, firstly, uh, uh, the number of different companies that you can actually be deployed in. Uh, but secondly, because of that uh, systems thinking uh, that, that I spoke about before, and that's a, a key skill that, that chemical engineers have, uh, you can actually be uh, deployed in, in many different roles and functions within that same company. So, so that's, a, that's a key thing as well. So uh, chemical engineers can be deployed in, in the conventional uh, industries, such as fast moving consumer goods, uh, mining, minerals processing, uh, chemicals, petrochemicals. This is not an exhaustive list, so uh, there's many more uh, that can actually uh, feature here. But, but also recently, uh, there's been a shift to the non-conventional industries, uh, such as banking and, and, and financial management consulting. And these companies are really, you know, interested in the skills that chemical engineers have. So the systems thinking that we spoke about uh, earlier, uh, optimization of processes, uh, being able to analyze and, and find solutions com to, to complex problems. Uh, and with these opportunities uh, come the ability to work for great big companies, uh, multinational companies or national companies uh, that, again, are, are able to enrich your, your career experience uh, and give you a, a much bigger perspective on, on, on your part in, in, in the global uh, scene. The profession is definitely future proof. So if you look at some of the challenges that uh, humanity is facing now, um, issues of sustainability, uh, challenges in, in, in the provision of water and the provision of energy, uh, food, nutrition, health, uh, you know, you, you're gonna be working on these problems uh, for many years in the future. And with this comes the opportunity to make a, a really big difference. So you'll see that chemical engineers will be traditionally deployed in, in, in the most critical services. So um, provision of energy, water, uh, also uh, uh, safety and so forth. And, uh, and you'll be able to, to, to really work on those services that, 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 that are important to the most vulnerable in society. So definitely an opportunity to make a difference. In terms of career pro uh, progression, uh, I think chemical engineers typically uh, and very rapidly uh, attain a level where they will be uh, managing large teams and you'll hear from one of our ex-students uh, soon, uh, but also, you know, managing entire plants. Uh, and, and, and this is very good because it, it really gives you that enriching experience again in terms of your career. 
uh, and also allows you to grow in, in certain skills that you can acquire along the way. Uh, but with this responsibility, obviously, comes remuneration. So although money is not, you know, the only thing that you should be thinking about, um, you know, in the right role, chemical engineers still rank amongst the most highest or the mo most highest paid uh, professionals uh, in the world. So, so these are just, you know, a very brief summary of the uh, different reasons uh, chemical engineering really is an attractive uh, career choice. So I'm going to move on now to uh, the third and, and, and final question in, in, in the presentation, and that's, you know, why choose UKCM? Uh, and in order to do that, let me uh, introduce the program to you. Um, our, uh, our discipline uh, offers both undergraduate and postgraduate degrees uh, in, in chemical engineering. Uh, and our vision is actually to be the preferred uh, department of chemical engineering in the country. So how do we go about doing that? We've spoken about this before. Uh, the program is accredited by the Engineering Council of, of, of South Africa uh, and is internationally recognized. So we were previously benchmarked by the Institution of Chemical Engineers uh, in the UK. Uh, so in a way, uh, compared to some of the top performing uh, departments in, in the Commonwealth. Um, and this allows you, obviously, as, as we've spoken about before, to, to, to travel to, to, to foreign countries and actually practice you know, uh, in, in those, those areas. We also have some of the largest and most productive uh, research groups in the country, and I'll touch on that a little bit later on in this presentation, uh, including, and I must say this, the, the top published engineering researcher in, the, in, in, in Africa. Um, we've got a very modern curriculum uh, and state-of-the-art laboratories. In fact, uh, our pilot plant laboratory is rated amongst the uh, best in the country. Now, within our program, uh, at the undergraduate level, uh, our program is geared uh, primarily towards chemical process design, uh, process and product uh, research and experimentation as well. Um, at, at the first year, we, we expose you uh, mostly to the fundamentals of maths, chemistry, and physics, just to lay that foundation for you to uh, then progress to more uh, chemical engineering oriented topics. Um, at the second and, and, and third year, uh, where we now uh, talk, you know, talk about or teach you, you know, the internal workings of those unit operations that I mentioned uh, previously and how they fit within processes and how processes actually uh, function. Uh, and that takes you to the final year of our program. Uh, where you now start working on uh, applied design. Uh, and that's the chemical process design that I spoke about before. Now, of course, as you graduate from uh, UKZN with your degree, you also take away you know, a handful of skills that you've developed uh, through our program. And I've listed some of them on, on, on this particular slide. So you'll definitely you know, develop good problem solving ability. That's one of the key outcomes of, of, of your engineering program. Uh, you'll also develop rational and lateral thinking ability, uh, hopefully a, a high level of, of curiosity as well. Chemical engineers are well known for asking the most questions. Um, uh, good communication and social skills. So these are soft skills. You know, How do you uh, convey your ideas and solutions to uh, you know, your peers and to the general public as well. That's a, a key element of, of the program. Independent thinking, uh, you are going to be obviously managing and, and leading uh, in various uh, divisions in industry. So you must have that ability to think, think independently. And of, of course, you have to uh, have instilled responsibility and ethics in the students as well, uh, which is a hallmark of, of, of any uh, good engineer. So we've got a, a good complement of academic staff at uh, various uh, academic levels, and, and, and they carry out or conduct research uh, in various areas. Uh, for instance, thermodynamics, uh, biorefinery, uh, water and sanitation, uh, minerals processing, for instance, and, and reactive technology, just to name a few. We're also home to, to quite a number of, of, of really great uh, research groupings and research units and centers, and I'm gonna be running through a couple of them here in these, in these slides. Um, for example, the thermodynamics research unit, uh, well-established research unit within the university, it's, it's probably uh, one of the biggest or the largest uh, laboratories that focuses on thermodynamics on the African continent, um, working uh, primarily on the measurement and prediction of how different chemicals can be separated uh, from, from one another. 
We're also very proud to have one of the South African research chairs with us, uh, the Saatchi Research Chair in Sugarcane Biorefining, Prof. Anne Stark. Uh, her team oh. working on the transformation of uh, sugarcane and other biomass uh, into valuable products, um, which is particularly relevant for us here on the east coast of, of South Africa with our relatively large sugarcane industry, but also, you know, in terms of our transition to a more sustainable uh, source of, of energy and, and, and fuels. We're also quite happy to have the, or be the home for the Water Sanitation and Hygiene Research and Development Center, one of the biggest centers of its kind in the country, uh, which houses a bioprocess engineering laboratory where they conduct experiments in, in, in wastewater uh, and, and, and sanitation. Um, a little bit later on, we're going to be playing a little video for you. We're going to be showcasing one of the community engagement projects. They really do a lot of work uh, within and, and, and for the, the, communicate, sorry, the communities uh, in KZN and around the country. And finally, there's the Re Reactor Technology Research Group uh, working on the development of advanced materials for application in chemical reactors and uh, separators with a number of these technologies uh, reaching uh, commercialization. So we come back to that uh, question that I asked uh, just a few slides ago, why choose uh, UKZN? If I had to wrap it up in, in, in just one uh, sentence, uh, we are here to help you achieve the greatness you deserve. Uh, and, and, and there's really no better place to be. That brings me now to the end of my short presentation. Um, if you want to reach out to me, you can uh, catch me on my email. Uh, it's lockout at uh, ukzn.ac.za. Uh, of course, as uh, Bryce has pointed out, you can uh, uh, go onto our engineering website uh, listed there. Uh, have a look at our, what our program offerings are. I'm sure you'll find some, some useful information there as well. And if you have a little bit of extra time and the ability to do so, um, also have a look at our, uh, the ChemEng Evolution website. Um, it's been put together by quite a number of volunteers, including myself uh, from around the world, uh, and really focuses on how chemical engineers have in the past and then also in the future uh, helped to shape uh, our world. Okay, so that brings us to the end of my presentation. Uh, I'm gonna stop share now. And uh, we're gonna play a couple of videos. Actually, uh, Swasti is gonna do that for us. Um, it's just two very short videos and they uh, touch on, on or they showcase a couple of research projects that we've uh, had in our department. Um, and it, it kind of demonstrates the breadth of our research expertise. So the first one deals with uh, recycling of, 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 of uh, a waste product, uh, which you know uses all of those unit operations that I spoke about before. Uh, and the second one is, is really a, a community engagement project uh, in water and sanitation uh, and shows the kind of impact that we can have uh, in that respect as well. So uh, I'm going to mute myself. Uh, Swasti, if you can just play those, those short videos for us. You would remember from your high school chemistry a group of elements in the periodic table known as rare earth metals. These include elements such as yttrium and europium. Aside from being extremely rare, these elements that are obtained from mining activities have unique properties that currently make them essential for modern electronic devices such as cell phones, computers, LED televisions and electronics used in the aerospace and automotive industries. They are also essential for the operation of energy efficient lighting. The dumping of certain light bulbs in landfill sites releases toxic compounds such as mercury which leaches into groundwater and is harmful to humans, plants and animals. This practice is being discouraged globally. To support the global community in addressing this problem, chemical engineers at the University of KwaZulu-Natal have patented a technology that recovers rare earth compounds from electronic and lighting waste in a form that can be easily reused. The process uses chemical engineering techniques known as liquid-liquid extraction and crystallization. Another important benefit of this technology is that it converts toxic compounds such as mercury 
into non-hazardous compounds which can be removed. Small mobile rare earth recovery plants can be easily set up near electronic waste recycling plants. These plants are cost effective and even profitable when the rare earth metals recovered are sold back into the electronics industry, creating an alternative channel to mining for supply of rare earth metals. My name is Sepesihle Kumalo. I'm a process software engineer. Um, I work on the engineering field testing um, for UKZN. Um, so I'm working on a system um, that was designed by a company from China called Ecosen. So the system is basically um, toilets in a container. We've got a biological system. So the black water from the toilets um, goes through the screens, then the biological system where water is treated biologically using bacteria. From there, further treatment takes place in the electrochemical reactor. Mm -hmm. So this is just basic electrolysis where electrolysis is applied in water. So we add salt. For, um, to increase conductivity of water. From there it goes to the um, gag columns, which is called um, granular activated carbon. So um, for removing of residual chlorine. So chlorine is one of the important um, chemicals in water. From there it goes to the holding tanks um, and then we use that water for flushing. So the system um, was uh, to address the issue of um, lack of water. So if we use flushing water, um, um, recycling that water for flushing, we'll use uh, less fresh water. And also, so initially um, the system had solar panels, um, so to so use less energy as possible yeah, from the grid power. Thank you so much, Swasti. I hope you enjoyed those short clips. Um, I'm now going to ask our ex-student uh, to join us uh, on stage. Um, let me just share the presentation here. OK. Um, Right, so uh, our ex-student that's gonna be speaking to us tonight is Kiara Premlal. Kiara is a process engineer with uh, Alco NCP in Durban, uh, part of the Alco Group, uh, one of the largest producers and distributors of fuel ethanol in, in Europe. Um, she graduated with a BSc in chemical engineering from UKZN and, and completed an engineer in training uh, program with, with Sassel before uh, returning to Durban. Uh, Kiara was actually the top performing uh, chemical engineering student regionally in a year. Uh, and was, of course, awarded the South African Institution of Chemical Engineers Student Medal. Uh, thank you, Kiara, again, for uh, volunteering to, to join us this, this evening. And uh, yeah, over to you. Uh, good evening, David. Uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the open day. Um, David, I'm not sure if you can hear me. We can hear you. OK. Uh, so yeah, I'm Chiara Premlal. I graduated from UKZN with a BSc in Chemical Engineering in 2017. And it's my pleasure today to give you an insider's view into chemical engineering, what to prepare for and what to expect after you complete your degree. So firstly, why choose chemical engineering? Do you tick the boxes smart, driven, motivated and innovative? Are you great at maths and physics even in your sleep? That is great. That is great for any job in the 21st century. So I ask you again, why choose chemical engineering? Back in 2013, when I was in your position, deciding on what career path to take, engineering, medicine, actuarial science, these were all options on my list. I chose engineering because I loved problem solving. As a kid, I had completed many Sudoku 
and crossword puzzle books. I enjoyed mathematics Olympiads. It was as if my mind constantly enjoyed processing and unraveling complex problems quite naturally. If my story emanates within you, then the engineering umbrella is definitely an excellent choice for you. Look around you, look in your wallet or your purse, look in your car, you'll find hundreds of products in your daily life that you literally could not exist without these refining and chemical industries. Look at global movements towards renewable clean energy, look at organizational restructuring for more optimum operations, whether that operation is mining, chemical or petrochemical processing, whether it is banking, business or engineering consulting. Engineers around the world are at the forefront of number one, finding a problem, Number two, deriving a solution which is both profitable and environmentally sustainable. Number three, executing that solution with a precise plan. And number four, optimizing the final solution because that is how rapid the engineering space grows. Chemical engineering stood out to me because chemical engineers are described as universal engineers. We are the iron men and women of engineering. In all of the above, your boss is probably going to be the smart chemical engineer who defined the project feasibility and design and made the rules for how to build and bring the project to life. This is because your knowledge base and abilities are broadly developed when completing this degree. You're also lucky because your solution typically depends on integrating other engineering disciplines. So you learn the basics related to mechanical, electrical and electronic engineering when working in these diverse teams. In the first year of chemical engineering, your program will be quite similar to the other engineering disciplines, with the exception of more complicated chemistry and chemical engineering principles courses. My advice to you for the first year is to apply your mind to understanding the course content. As Dumbledore once said, help will always be given to those who ask for it. So at UKZN2, there is a lot of help available, help that will enable you to properly understand the course content, not just swat it. Each course has many classes, which are called tutorials. There are also supplemental instructions offered. Both classes are similar to tuition in high school. These lessons are useful to attend to properly engage with the course content. During your first year, you should start researching where you will complete your required 16 weeks of vacation work. Working in a manufacturing plant during your vacation work is a great opportunity to put the engineering principles that you've learned into practice and figure out if traditional process engineering is for you. A great tip is to also network with the older engineering students in second, third and fourth year because they'll have a lot of advice having gone through the same process already. In second year, your course content is designed to build a foundation for chemical engineering fundamentals, fundamentals which you will further develop in the next years. This year will teach you how to conceptualize a problem into bite sizes before reaching a solution. The third and fourth year course content further develops your chemical engineering skills. The content and tutorials in this year are designed to stretch your mind so you can understand the problem before applying a feasible assumption or equation and solving it. The final answer is only a small part of the problem. The road to the solution is the most important. In these years, your applied work will be very exciting. You will start to simulate process plants on computer programs. You will be designing process plants equipment by hand calculations on Microsoft Excel, MATLAB, or Python. You will start to couple some of the mathematical problem solving techniques that you've learned, and then you'll solve real engineering problems. Your applied work will bring the fund fundamental concepts that you've learned to life, allowing you to see where and how it fits with the theory. In your final semester, all the skills that you've learned over the years will converge into your final design course. Final design will not only depend on how good you are at doing engineering design, how well you do will largely depend on your time management skills. In fact, throughout your degree and actually the rest of your life, your time management skills will be tested. Regarding future employment, many companies like Sasol, Unilever, Hatch, Sapi, AB and Bev, to name a few, would have already started advertising bursaries for next year. Puff and Pass and Career Junction are good websites to use to find information on bursaries each year. There's also scholarships available at UKZN if you maintain your average over 80% for the year. And trust me, it is possible. It's also important to think ahead about which industry you would most likely fit after you qualify. And it's important to start thinking about these things as early as possible. 
From my experience, I enjoyed my vacation work at Sapi Cycle in my second and third year. Vacation work for me was a really good guide to use and um, to, to decide to become a chemical engineer in a traditional manufacturing industry. Um, I also considered the consulting role, so working in a bank, business or engineering firm, but I decided to pursue the role of chemical engineer in manufacturing industry. So companies that I applied to included Sasol, Sapi, Unilever, Hatch, Floor, and Whirly Parsons. During your final year, it will also be challenging to balance the workload as well as prepare for interviews. So when you're preparing for interviews, always make sure that you research the companies well, that you at least know the final products that they make, their locations, the raw materials of their business, this will demonstrate to the company that you're truly interested in joining them. You should do the same when you're applying for bursaries. Since I enjoyed the role of traditional process engineering, I joined Sasol in 2018 as a chemical engineer in training. Sasol is renowned for having one of the best engineering training programs in the country. It's a three year program, so it's a little bit long, but in this program, I rotated in different business units. I did process engineering support for a wastewater treatment plant, which basically included troubleshooting the daily plant issues and optimizing the operation of the plant. The aim is to always maximize the uptime and efficiencies in a sustainable manner and to minimize downtime. I then moved to process engineering design in Sasol Group Technology. Here I was responsible for completing the engineering design for several projects, starting from coal processing to some hydro treating units in the refinery. And these projects were in the order of 50 million rands before moving back to engineering plant support in the refinery. I left Sasol at the beginning of 2021 to join Alco NCP in Durban, which produces portable ethanol and distillers dried grain for animal food. My experience thus far has been centered around commissioning the new plants. After we changed feedstock from molasses, which is a liquid feed to maize, which is solids and solids handling comes with a lot of problems and problems means solutions that I have to develop. I recently completed a stint in Alco Biofuel in Belgium, where we commissioned a new addition to their plant, which has been running now more or less stable for the past 15 years. So it was quite exciting to go from a plant that we just commissioned last year, which has problems every day, to a stable plant that's uh, where you can focus uh, on process optimization. So there we, we, we commissioned a project which enabled the plant to increase production capacity. So all in all, it's been a really rewarding career being a process engineer thus far in the manufacturing space. You daily get to see your ideas in, on paper come to life. And um, with climate change on our heels, chemical engineers are at the forefront of the changes in thinking and processes that will define the world in the years to come. It's an ever-changing space. Every day will be a different day. You will constantly have new problems and new technologies to play with. You will constantly be researching how to improve the processes in your business, how to remove bottlenecks, how to operate cleaner and greener while constantly maximizing profits. To conclude, I must say, science and engineering as highly competitive fields of education can be quite intolerant of any lack of attention and concentration. So I urge you to take your engineering degree seriously. You will be challenged beyond your expectations, experience both good and bad days. You will fail a test every now and again, but it will also be the beginning of a beautiful educational journey. And it doesn't end because it becomes a way of life. You will see the art that is chemical engineering years from now when you are also shaping your future companies. Um, thank you. Thank you so much, Kiara. Uh, that was really an enlightening talk and, and you seem to have taken us through quite a number of years in a very short space of time. Um, I'd like to just remind the, the, the attendees uh, that there is a poll, uh, it's anonymous, uh, it is compulsory if you have attended this session, if you can, at the end of this virtual session, uh, undertake uh, this poll for us. Uh, it's just a few questions that need to be answered. Um, I'm going to bring Swasti back in. Um, she's going to play a, a short promotional video. Uh, it just covers our uh, discipline and, and, and some of the requirements uh, for, for, for entry into, into the program. So uh, over to you, Swasti, if you can just take us through that very short video uh, for now.
Chemical Apologies, everyone. I think uh, the screen is just frozen. Uh, Swasi, if you can maybe restart the video. Engineering at the university. Chemical engineering at the University of KwaZulu-Natal. We optimize, we design, we process. Chemical engineering refers to the design, construction, operation. and management of industrial plants in which raw materials undergo physical and or chemical change. Chemical engineers model the many common features of these processes mathematically, leading to alternative designs, optimal computer control and improved economics. At UKZN, learn more about oil refining, food processing, power generation, mineral processing and water treatment. The discipline of chemical engineering at UKZN creates an enabling environment for learning at both the undergraduate and postgraduate level in order to tackle the four grand challenges in the profession. That is, water, energy, health and well-being, food and nutrition. Join the School of Engineering at the University of KwaZulu-Natal, inspiring greatness. Thank you again, Swasti, for that uh, short video. Um, as you see, the poll is popping up on your screen. So if you can just take some time to, to complete that for us. Um, I've been asked to also uh, extend the thanks to the uh, presenters this uh, evening as well. Uh, first of all, thank you to our Dean of Engineering, Professor Glenn Bright, um, for that great introduction. Uh, it really set the tone for, for the session this, this evening. Uh, thank you again to our uh, ex-student, Kiara Premlal. Uh, we really appreciate you taking the time off uh, to, to join with us uh, this evening to, to give the, the, the potential uh, students a, a taste of, of what's to come. Uh, and of course, uh, a, a, a heartfelt thanks to, to the organizing committee for this uh, session. Uh, you've done a really great job in ensuring everything uh, runs smoothly. Um, I'm going to now hand back to, to Swasti. Uh, she's going to uh, play a, a, a research video uh, from the discipline uh, and then back to her just to, to, to close off the, the program. Uh, Swasti, back to you. Uh, David, I'll just give it a few minutes for them to finish with the poll and then launch the video. Okay, no problem.
The research from chemical engineering has a direct impact on the environment. Given the amount of industrial activity in South Africa, there are constant efforts to reduce the emissions and to do things in a cleaner, more efficient way, reducing uh, the consumption of raw materials and uh, impacts to the environment. At the Thermodynamics Research Unit, we undertake phase equilibrium measurements, mostly for separation processes in industry. Uh, we have a large laboratory with, a, with many students and researchers. We also have a division which looks at computer simulations and modeling of chemical processes. We have developed a process that extracts rare earth metals from luminophorous powder. The luminophorous powder is a product from the lighting recycling industry and the rare earth metals that we extract can be sold for reuse in industry. The Pollution Research Group concentrates on water and sanitation. We work very closely with um, the Itokwini Municipality and through that the Water Research Commission of South Africa. The primary funding of course comes from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Another interesting project that we're working on is the analysis of um, the Skyrus eggs. Um, we have a team of people that are looking at um, the analysis of Ascaris um, because it is the pathogen that we have of major concern and we need to be able to assess different technologies for their um, efficiency in deactivating these worms. We have a project in conjunction with our partners in crop science and that's looking at um, the recycling of nutrients from urban areas to rural areas. Um, and that project is being done in conjunction with four other African universities. The major breakthrough in 2018 for us was to uh, be awarded the prestigious South African um, Research Chair Initiative. A recent project that we are running on sugarcane wax. You can extract wax from the sugarcane rind and this can be used to substitute other waxes in higher lifestyle products or cosmetics, pharmaceuticals. Thank you everybody for attending. That concludes today's session and we, welcome, we hope that you join us tomorrow for the next session, which is elect electrical, electronic, and computer engineering. Cheers, everybody. Thanks very much. Thank you, everyone. Bye.